quick little um, background on me. Gil said I, I went to school in Montana and uh, through playing football was like one of my favorite parts of sports was just actually preparing was with, with the training aspect. I love the fitness side of it um, almost as much as actually playing. And I got, uh, I was on this finance for um, basically almost strength and conditioning track. And I graduated in 2009 and my internship at CIBC down here. My mom's a stockbroker. I wanted to go into finance. That program was crushed. The economy was in the gutter. I thought I'd do personal training for like a couple months and until things got back and get into it. And then I just fell in love with it. And uh, nine years later, I was still in Vancouver and just came back. So um, I had a, about, about 11 years of uh, just professional career in, in health and wellness. Uh, during the day now, I, I work for a, a biotech company, so I kind of wear a couple hats. About a few years ago, I transferred into uh, biotechnology, so then you guys get... Uh, I, I work for a company that makes orthopedic devices, so if you have to have, unfortunately, surgery on your head, knee, shoulder, uh, wrist, anything like that, we kind of provide all the instrumentation for surgeons to fix you, and I know all the guys, most of the guys in Calgary already, so... Please hit me up if uh, you or a friend needs some advice in that regard as well. That's something I'm pretty, pretty into it. But so strength is just, uh, just I mean, you, after two years of a strength science kind of program, it's adaptation of stress. And that can be an umbrella term for anything. With weights, it's very easy to measure that because it's, I adapted to 100 kilos physically. My body went through these changes in order to snatch 100 kilos. And now I'm going to add 101 and I'm going to go through you know, the connective tissue is going to adapt a little bit. All we're trying to do in a performance realm and why it's really easy to measure is we want to try to get our body to adapt to certain stresses that either badminton, weightlifting, anything else, then we can go and perform and know like, okay, I'm physically prepared for this. Now it's all mental. Now I got to rely on the mental ability. And that's, that's what kind of stems confidence. And we'll kind of get into that. I'm physically good. Now I just need to worry about between the years. And that's, that's a, a whole nother discussion. So really, you know, like there's so much party trick movements out there. You see on, you know, on Instagram, everyone's like, try this out. I've never seen more women in the gym nowadays doing like every butt blasting type of banded exercise and glute specific stuff and blah, 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 um, which can just like make your head spin on like, what am I supposed to do? It's all these flavor of the week. It's cool. You know, it's, movement's amazing. It's cool to kind of see everything you can kind of do. But really when we're talking about breaking the human body down into the planes of movement we can train and what's actually going to be transferable to anything you do, we break it down into seven movements. Pressing, that's upper body and there's different planes for that. Bench press, shoulder press, you know, any type of pressing movement with your upper body. Uh, pulling, same thing, you know, examples are a deadlift or a pull up or anything upper and lower body where you're pulling. Squatting, it's pretty self-explanatory. Hinging, uh, or sorry, lunging, which is just a unilateral squat, um, which hiking, anything like that translates to. So you have bilateral, unilateral, legs working together or, or apart. Hinging, and that's basically probably the most important movement, which is the base of almost all sports, is just generating power from hip flexion to extension, and that's how you jump and run and, and do everything like that. Rotation and counter-rotation are big things. Um, and then isometric holes, which is just your classic, you know, holding a plank, holding positions uh, with added stress and seeing, you know, how long you can do it. This, it, these are just different, all, this is a formula for how you can apply stress. So I can apply stress to any of these planes. Uh, that's going to create a change. And that's kind of like, let's break down what actual strength training is. It's just moving well. So if you can't, if you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm lifting two plates now, but I get shoulder pain. Your body is either, you know, strength and like the actual human anatomy responds in two ways. You get rewarded if you move well. And then if you have resistance to that, you get rewarded by seeing improvement. Uh, and then your body punishes you. And the only language our body really knows with, Hey, you're doing this wrong is to, to send a pain feedback. So that's where you're like, yeah, I'm squatting, but I get this pain here and there. And that's where whole career, um, a whole industry is developed of physios and chiros and everyone telling you, here's what you're doing wrong and breaking it down. And that's why I kind of like to just go into this. Well, you know, first things first, you got to learn how to move. 
you gotta learn how to do a squat and then you gotta consistently learn how to do it. And as Tony's alluding to, then you get tired and then it's hard to kind of keep your form. And that's why CrossFit gets bashed so hard. People are like, wow, it's really intense. And you know, people are like, get hurt. It's like, well, it's just, you know, anything. If you are, if you're doing bar and your, your, you know, techniques off the way that you kind of, do a pirouette. I haven't, I haven't done it, but maybe Elizabeth can speak to it. Um, done it. Yeah, you tried it out. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it is. It's, it's, that's exploding in Vancouver. Five bar gyms opened in Kitsilano uh, the month before I left. Wow. A bunch of people from Calgary actually opening a few. But you do anything wrong, your body's going to send you a little response, and that's just saying, hey, fix this, or I'm going to have kind of an issue with it. And um, we can really create a lot of progress, which is going to make us motivated to keep doing something. If we just keep the basics of these seven movements, that's what every good strength program is based on. That's what the whole human body is based on. So creativity within this little algorithm is kind of all you need, and you really don't need to get too sexy with it as much as I'd like to say you do. We're on to the next one. So as, as kind of just said, like, complicated programs that bog people down. I mean, you could spend, we just talked about what strength actually is. So if you're doing, I see, you know, a ton of, a ton of people doing these like really sexy looking oxygen magazine programs, but there's no stress. Uh, strength works on a, a, something called a principle of overload. So if Elizabeth can do two push-ups with no problem, like there's no shake in her arms, it's totally fine, and she just does two push-ups every class that she goes to, there's not enough dose to actually make a change in the body. You need an overload, she would need to do three push-ups to actually create a change. It's, it's very similar to anything else. If your immune system is never challenged as a kid, suddenly you have every allergy and you get sick all the time. And our whole body is developed, uh, and physiology is all based on adaptation. So... That's what's cool about all the other topics we're going to talk about is you can adapt to, you can start learning how to meditate and your mind can adapt to actually just being free from constant thought distracting all the time. You can kind of adapt to anything that you can, can program in, but the science is like, how do I actually stick to something to give it enough chance to adapt? And what's my therapeutic dose of overload to actually make me strong? Mm -hmm. So the most effective programs, we all kind of talk about, hey, what works for you? What are you actually doing? Well, routines that I'm consistent with. You just said, I'm getting really good gains after three weeks. That's that like amazing adaptation window. Everyone that's come to CrossFit, um, that's kind of coaching off the bat, I'm like, enjoy the first month because it's just going to be personal records on the board every single time. And then suddenly you're like, man, I haven't hit a personal record in like a month. What's going on? It's like, well... It's awesome when you're learning how to play guitar and you come in for lessons and every day you're better until you, you know, plateau and then it's going to be that last 10% when you really master something. Um, so consistency, you're, you're only going to do something consistently if you enjoy it. Like, I don't run marathons because I ran one with my mom and I hated it after, you know, that's, I said, that's your mother's day for like the rest of your life. Um, but, uh, you know, I've, she loves to run. Like how she runs 20K every Sunday, that's her thing. And she'll do that every single week. Uh, it took me like six years to get her on a strength program because I said, this is going to make you a better runner. And so she knows she's invested in a program that's made her running times go down, which makes her happy. And that actually works. Mm -hmm. But my mom and my dad hate the gym. My dad just wants to play hockey all the time. The only way that he's doing his strength training now is because he can play hockey better if he's stronger. So... I, my job for a long time is like, what's going to make you tick and you got to find your why and all that stuff. That's very similar to kind of anything you do in life, but compliance is, is truly a science on stuff that you enjoy and stuff that actually works. And when it does and you see results, the reason Caleb stopped, stopped hating on CrossFit because like, well, I can show up in the morning at 6 a.m. I know I'm going to get a good workout. There's a good energy in the class. Like I want to turn my brain off and use my creative energy to make decisions for, for a company and for work. Um, and that's why a lot of people get drawn to something like that, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of people that are like, I like to put my headphones in, do my own thing. I'm totally like, this is my time. And it's, it can kind of be like a bit of, you know, it's therapy. And, you know, I kind of have those days where I just want to like go in and, and, and get it done on my own. Click on the next one. So I spent a long time, uh, when I was working in health and fitness, Basically, especially in corporate wellness, where I was like, hey, yeah, like athlete performance was all these, you know, really specific 
uh, workouts for working with the, the Olympic teams for a few years, getting ready for Sochi. And it's got to be all like super sports specific and doing all this stuff. As I get older and for us, like regular people that are like, listen, I got a job and I like to, you know, go hit a patio. Um, I just want to stay fit and feel good. I've been since switching careers, you know, since I moved to Calgary, I've been traveling for about a month and these, I, I pack those push-up panels. I bring a TRX usually with me everywhere I go. And at home, these are the two items I have with a kettlebell. And a lot of times I just sneak in and do the exact same thing as Tony. I go for a little, like I got 30 minutes to go for a 20 minute run and I finish off with a few sets of this. And I've met a ton of people that are in incredible shape, literally keeping keeping it this basic. Wow. So, um, you know, there's your body weight is a very powerful tool. You can make it as hard as you want. Um, and literally spending, you know, I spent a week in Texas where I was in a course for 12 hours a day and I got back and I was like, I got 30 minutes. I just did push ups and pull ups and came back. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be like pretty out of shape. And I'm, and I was fine. You know, it's so it's, yeah. There's a lot of, uh, the, the reality is it's just staying consistent and neuromuscular activation is kind of a sexy term they like to say is, you know, if you're not moving your body, just, your body wants to be as efficient as possible with its resources. And it's like, Hey, you haven't done like pull ups in eight years. So we're going to shut this down and we don't really need to develop muscle or strength in that area or just the ability to actually turn on your lats and everything you need to pull yourself up. Um, which is why strength is a skill. A lot of people think like, oh, strength, I got to have this big commitment to everything else. If you're not doing anything right now, and, and I say, here's a basic linear progression. So you're going to start with five push-ups today, and you're going to do one more every day for 30 days. And I come back in 30 days, you're going to be way better at push-ups. It's just like any other kind of, any other skill uh, where as long as you're moving and practicing it, you get better. And that can be with you know, spin bar, whatever. When we're talking about strength and the reason that it's so important uh, is because out of our like physical skills, everything's a lot easier if you're stronger. And that's going to be kind of the next thing we talked about here. Why does it matter to be strong? Well, uh, in super tiny font there, if you don't want to be strong, you don't care about strength for anything else. Your metabolic rate is completely correlated to, to strength. So, if you're on like, you know, super basic two days a week, Hey, listen, I'm like, I've tried a bunch of stuff and I just want to, I want to lose a little bit, a little bit of body fat, whatever your metabolism is going to go up. Um, well, famous study of just like every pound of muscle, you just burn nine more calories, uh, an hour just sitting here. So metabolism is, is highly affected by that more than any other type of uh, exercise, your blood glucose levels, which dictates a lot of chronic illness, mainly diabetes and other stuff like that, which is just a circulatory response. So your whole, your whole engine works a lot better if you're strong. Um, strength endurance, cardiovascular endurance. Strength is really segmented without getting bogged down in, in all the different types. There's there's uh, there's maximal strength, which is like, what can I do for one rep? I got trapped under a car, could I push it up? There's strength endurance, which, you know, it's in a sports world, if Tony's getting burnt out in one set of badminton, we get, we get him on a strength program and he gets 20% stronger by like the third round. He's just got more endurance. Mm -hmm. Running around the court takes less energy out of his body and he can just have more reps uh, without getting fatigued. So strength endurance is huge. I can articulate my lung capacity if I'm stronger. So every single, we did a, um, actually when I started working with triathletes, there's a really, really good study uh, that I referenced a lot because 80% of runners are hurt every year. And the, and the old formula, and I think this is kind of common knowledge now, is like long, slow duration. I'm doing an Ironman, I need to train 30 hours a week. And people would be so broken down by tendonitis and other type of ailments, they wouldn't even make it to the race. And it's like, okay, well, if you're, if you're not even healthy enough to compete in something because you're practicing your sport so much, then it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, so with that, what they just found is that runners who improve their squat by 10% of whatever their three rep max was, lower their marathon time down by an average of seven and a half minutes. So nothing else changed, technique, gait, all the other, all, you know, double blind study, whatever you want to call it. Every other um, variable is the same, but my squat strength went up and my marathon time went down. Well, let's extrapolate that to just really anything. 
Um, what we care about and why kind of like what I think, why I think this is kind of interesting for this group and anyone in the creative field is your mind just works better. Strength has a very, very effective transpiring effect on neurotransmitters in your brain that just make it when you're, when you're feeling confident physically, mentally, and you're usually in a more optimal position. So, um, the reason, the biggest reason why TELUS and a lot of the other co companies started, uh, you know, EA Sports was a huge one too up there that had this massive agenda on like, we got to get our employees stronger. Um, they had a lot of like so many people claiming benefits for postural reasons and the desk jockey, but they showed that, and they're now actually kind of like publishing this in like big, big studies that stronger people just number one, just are more confident, uh, just mentally have just feel better. And it's actually shows a positive result in creative space. Yeah. It's just when you're actually, you know, when you're actually in an optimal physical state, um, you know, mentally it's a lot easier to just kind of say, Hey, I'm actually doing okay. So there's a really, really good positive relationship with your serotonin and dopamine and just overall self esteem. When you feel like you're at your optimal strength and that's completely relative to, to everybody. Um, to everybody involved. So that's, that's a huge, huge thing that I'm seeing. And you can kind of see it. Anybody who's like very, who's never like been a gym goer, never really done any kind of fitness program and starts kind of feeling strong. It's just really empowering feeling. So that's why I think strength is super, super important just kind of for everybody. You know, like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm done playing sports. I need to give up on it. And I'm like, well, you know, like you're really not done with life. And this is a, uh, this, I mean, this is like a huge factor in your confidence and just the way that your brain works. So not to, um, to kill it, I want to leave a bit of time to kind of just discuss some stuff. Um, all of us kind of have some stuff that works. I put together some really, like I said before, Tim Ferriss uh, had, a, had a book called like Four Hour Body, which I read right when I kind of got into the field and it, it kind of really shaped my philosophy on strength and conditioning. I've created a bunch of very easy, I kiss, kiss strength just means keep it simple, stupid. Um, really, really like this is, there's a lot of thought that went into it. It's an eight week periodized program. So all your programs need to actually have some type of progression point, um, just to actually force your body to go into adaptation, actually make you stronger. Uh, but I put a few together. Um, that I shared with Caleb, he'll, he'll circulate it out to you guys. This one's an eight week get getting started program. So if you're like, Hey, even if you do do some strength training, you just want to kind of switch it up and just like turn your brain off and just follow something on there. They're all designed to be maximum an hour. And that includes like a good warm up and a cool down because the mobility aspect, like finishing with a little bit of cardio and just flushing out your system and kind of moving is super important. It's like coming out of the gym hot after you know, a set of deadlifts or something like that's a pretty bad idea. And that's usually how most people get hurt. Um, I sent him three programs. One is a minimalist program. I hate the gym. I want to do something at home. You don't need any equipment for it. Um, but the more that I do little stuff in the living room, kind of just get a morning routine going. And that's the kind of a talk I want to go through is like morning routines that help calibrate your day, especially when you're in a creative space. You just want to like start the day off really, really well. And I feel like that's kind of something that this group's probably already doing anyway. Um, this is stuff that when you know it's really easy to do at home and, uh, and for a lot of people, time is a huge issue. I don't have kids yet, but I've seen, you know, my brother kills about to have one. Uh, that can, you know, that just takes priority. This is, this is kind of your thing. Now, when you make time for this, when can you create space? A lot of times you're like, I can't, but here's what I can do at home. And I got 15 minutes and I worked with a ton of people in Vancouver for a long time. That that's what their life was really busy professionally, big families. And they're like, it's not a financial, it's, there's no restriction except for my time. And I just need something that, and the, and a lot of people give up and feel defeated because if they can't get to the gym, they don't think there's any point. So there's a minimalist program on there that's just truly based on minimum effective dose. All of these incorporate those seven planes of movement and just getting stronger with those. It's really important when you go through those to be like, I'm really good at pressing, I really suck at hinging, I uh, can't squat or, or, you know, know what you're good at, know what you're not good at. And then what's measured is managed, you know, subjective journaling of, okay, like how if these are eight week programs. So you, they literally show you week to week kind of how you're improving. If stuff's not improving, it's just like in your face. Oh, I, I really suck at squatting. 
because my movement's not there yet. Mm. When you move right, there's basically no possible way you can have improvement. The third one I put in is a little bit more kind of Rocky Mountain uh, itch in my soul. I put together a program called Mountain Strong. I used to work with a lot of kind of like really hardcore backcountry mountaineering guys. And I know a lot of people here are like just pretty active and like to hike. And that one's a lot more specific for the group of people I had in Vancouver that were like, I hate the gym, but I just want to, I, these were, I worked with a lot of hunters too, um, that were like, I go on like four or five day backpacking through the mountain trips and I physically just can't meet the demands of what this is. But if you even take that program, um, it's probably the one that we, me and the team put the most, the most time into, but if you just take it and even just use those concepts, uh, just for summer coming up and a lot of people like to get the fitness outside, it's super effective. And that one's, that one's on there as well. So you kind of got your, you know, entry middle and then something that's a little bit more specific, kind of take a peek to and see what works for you. 